بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم دي فيورز ওয়েলকাম টু ইউ টাওয়ার আপনারা সবাইকে স্বাগত আমার নাম সাকুদ্দিন আমরা সবাইকে স্বাগত জানাচ্ছি মাই নেম ইজ সাকুদ্দিন and with me today i have really special friends robin welcome to our show thank you thank you miles you're welcome to our show as well <laughs> thank you cheers mate robin tell me about yourself yeah so my name is ruben um i'm the founder of a social enterprise called live and love talent and what live and love talent does is enhances the self esteem the confidence and the engagement within young people and we do this through workshops in schools creative writing workshops um fusing spoken word with the curriculum um also i am a part of an organization called always creative which works to empower local entrepreneurs giving them the skills that they need to turn their ideas into businesses social enterprises things like that um and last but not least i am a part of an organization called poetic unity and we um bring poets together give them a platform to express themselves <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like. Yeah, definitely. Mal, tell me about yourself, sir. Yeah, quite similar to Ruben as well. I'm a founder of a social enterprise. Um, we tackle similar issues and actually in a similar way to Ruben. So we also provide workshops in schools. Um, but the whole point of the organisation of the social enterprise is to combat unemployment, especially youth unemployment, because it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. So we do that in three ways. The first is the workshops that we go into schools. Um, and that's, that's a pretty direct way of doing it. So we teach kids ways to interview well, um, ways to search for their dream career. Uh, the second is we provide direct recruitment events. So it's like speed dating, but it's for employers to match with candidates. Uh, and it's a great setup. It works really well. And then last and not least, we have an online learning platform where we release videos weekly um, and blog posts about how people can stay employable for long periods of time. Fantastic. And then we're going to have a lovely show today. Dear viewers, um, you can call us with the name number there and call us alive. And it will be very interesting for our young people. You know, please get them to watch us, mm -hmm. and then they should take some tips from these experts. After that, we will not see my brother. Okay, so after that, after the bachelor, okay, bring them into the TV and let, get them to see what they say. These guys are experts. They know what they're talking about. Too kind. <laughs> <laughs> Too kind. <laughs> Um, you know, there is uh, issues like you. It's a holiday mm -hmm. time, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people don't have anything to do. You know, mm -hmm. there are lots of gang violence. There are lots of, but they they got free time. They don't know what to do. So, mm -hmm. what kind of issues do you think we're facing at the moment, Robin? Um, the issues I think young people are facing at the moment, gang culture is a is a big one. But I think even before we get to gang culture, that's just a symptom of the 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 ways in which society is today. And I feel like. Um, young people they their kind of their voice isn't it doesn't seem to be appreciated and it doesn't seem like they are a true they're seen as to be a true reflection on society which they are um and yeah they there's a lot of there's a lack of exposure with the arts especially like i know speaking from myself um i'm working with a few organizations now one being the roundhouse and um i'm from south london and the roundhouse is so far it's in Camden which is so far away from South London and um that's just an example but a lot of things like that that kind of they give these young people access to the culture they term the arts cultures they give young people access to kind of workshops and things that they could use there just isn't any accessibility for them you and know they call it unknown generation you know mm. they call it and they don't know people of this age like under 19 up to 16 they don't know where they are where they go no there's no clue at all you know so if you say unknown generation it sounds really strange and scary mm -hmm. what do you mean unknown who are these people then you know what are we doing about them you know we just can't blame young people look they we don't have money youth club like it used to be there's no green space for them you know like we used to be there's always something going up and up and up and down so where do they go you know can we just blame them who should take responsibility for of those young people what do you think i think it comes down a lot it comes down a lot to education um which is pretty much as ruben said it's sort of mm -hmm. the crux of it so if there was um if there was a better if there was a better funneling system for where young people should go mm -hmm. 
um, I think there'd be less issue with sort of what they come out as. Because if you take if you take the education system at the moment, um, pretty much across the world, it's a big it's a big application process for university. I mean, you come in when you're four or five years old to kindergarten or preschool, mm -hmm. and then you make your way through primary school, secondary school. You, well, I did SATs when I was my <laughs> age, but I'm sure that's changed now. Mm -hmm. And then you do GCSEs to your A-levels. And by the way, at every stage, you're told that this is the most important decision of your life. And then finally, it comes this little point where you apply for university. And there's such a, well, not a small percentage of people, but it's, the process is so protracted and it's made to be such a long thing that if you aren't one of the people that make it there, if you aren't one of the people that apply and then go to university, the system supposedly fails you. Um, you're left with a lot of free time, as you said, you're left with m many avenues that aren't promoted. So one of the things that I think is the government have done well um, is apprenticeships. So for a long time there wasn't, if you didn't go to university, it, you went out and got a job. I mean that was the case in my, in my parents' days and when I left school it was expected. Whereas nowadays there is the apprenticeships that come out, you can go to college, um, and there are many different options. The problem is there is that it's hard to motivate somebody to go out to work for two pound fifty an hour. Realistically, yeah. it is. And if you're a parent struggling to get your kid out to work, suggesting an apprenticeship probably isn't going to go down all too well, unless it is something that they're hugely passionate about. I mean, I know somebody. Sorry to just keep going, but I know someone who's really passionate about music. Um, and if you said to him, right, you know, you can get an apprenticeship, you can go work in a call centre, you can go do this, you can go do that, he would have said no. But he got offered one at a recording studio, and he took it up in a second, and he would have probably worked for free, because he was learning about it, he knew what he wanted, um, and that was the industry he wanted to go into. So, if I, was, if I was giving some advice to parents, I'd say, you know, look past just getting your, your kid a job, or an apprenticeship, or push them through to uni. I'd say, look at what they're good at. Uh, look at their qualities, not their qualifications, is something I always say. Because at the end of the day, you'll be happiest when you work do, doing do your you qualities. Do you know the number of people that work in, especially young people? Do you know the not off the top of my head, no. Very big number, though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it is a, I it's think it's the majority. A job. Like my kid, he left, uh, a, he done his A-level second year, and he's looking for a part-time job. And I can see he's trying. He can, I can see it. That's, that's the good thing about he's trying, you know. But as soon as they hear he's... 17 and under, you know, mm -hmm. under 18, it's difficult to find a job. Well, where's he applying? What sort of things is he applying I know for? he's doing it on online. Is he? Yeah, stuff. okay, yeah. So uh, these are some issues, I think. Uh, people are a bit lazy. They don't know what to do. And for a young person, it's, it's a step, first step they're taking, you know. They've been... It's, I, w I sort of agree with laziness, but it's more there's the lack of direction. Um, and I was, we were speaking earlier, we were speaking off camera, and I'm, and I'm starting to put blame on companies like Reed and... Uh, monster jobs because it makes it so easy for you to just go on and apply for a hundred jobs in an hour possibly and you can do that every day and get nothing back and that process must be so demotivating when I actually think it's a lot more important if you are in the situation where you're job hunting to pick a few that you might be passionate about so in your son's case what is he most passionate about? He any kind of job as long as there's a job there he wants to do it. He wants so to he, him, he's a hard worker is yeah, he? Yeah so for him he's Fine, find me a job and I'll do it. Talk to you. Even he talks to me, talk to your friends, get me to do something. I don't even mind going to Asda and do it. So he's proactive that as is, well. That is good. They're great That's qualities. The good news. But one thing you mentioned, I think it's really unique. You said actually they find it so easy to apply for it online, mm -hmm. 800, whatever number. And it, when it doesn't work, they feel, oh, bloody hell, I tried it and it didn't work. It's, ne it's never going to work. That's why no one's working. See, see, that's really dangerous to do it. Mm -hmm. and do you feel like just that? Just not even to cut you, but um, like when you're applying for a job, that email that you get and it starts off, unfortunately, that's so crushing, especially to somebody that, a young person, um, that hasn't had a job before. Especially if you're getting a hundred of them a day because you're exactly. applying for so many jobs. Mm. Um, sorry. And I feel like there's no kind of training, no, no, there's not enough CV training. Um, there's not enough kind of knowing how to approach these companies and mm. actually knowing how to research and how to, um, get the information that can be used to filter into your CVs, filter into these cover letters. There's a lot of that that's, that's lacking, I think. Um, yeah, and e even going building off of what you were saying about the school system, I feel like the format that they use is, is a little archaic. It's, it's, a, it's not kind of adapting, because when, when a child's in a classroom, they're in there for, what, six hours, sitting in front of the chalkboard, and then they leave. As soon as they leave, the building, 
society is moving so fast, they've got the internet, everybody's on their phone, music's moving so fast, films are, so they're being pumped left, right and centre with all of these different informations, all of these different multimedia platforms. And then they go back to school and it's kind of just being static again. They're, they're being just there pumping information, people are pumping information into them. And yeah, I feel like once the school system kind of actively engages young people using the devices that they engage with outside of the school system, mm -hmm. it will be easier for them to, to interact with this information that they're being taught and to actually use it. Because I know a lot of people, they were, they were good at passing uh, a test, they were good at passing their GCSEs, but they didn't actually learn anything. You know, um, especially people in uni as well, some of my friends, they're good at going to uni and just writing the, the papers that need to be written and passing the test. But to actually learn and engage with the information, there's, it's difficult. Yes. And I, I feel like there needs to be more training for that. But there are lots of school nowadays, like even mm. in the sixth school holiday, they have four weeks, you could go involved with, young people can go into a school and mm. do something. Mm -hmm. And there are the trainings that are around. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. Sorry. I'd yeah, go on. Yeah. You'd be surprised that, I mean, because we contact, I, well, I contact schools on a regular basis to try and get them to book my workshop where I go in and try and outline some of the things that Ruben just said about CV writing, cover letters, mm -hmm. sort of important things like that. And you'd be surprised how many of them don't do it. They, mm -hmm. don't have, they have very little mm -hmm. emphasis on what happens if you're not going further onto university mm -hmm. or going out to get an apprenticeship. I mean, I say, as I said, I don't think it's laziness. I think it's direction. Because, in my, from what I see anyway, it is if when, when someone settles down and they find their passion and they turn that into a career and then they make money yeah. from their passion, that is such a rewarding process, much more rewarding than going out and spending time with your friends in most cases. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's about laziness or about you know, gang culture. I think it's just about putting people on the right path. It's just like the steps, we, if you can guide the person mm -hmm. to find his dream and then it's on. Yeah. If he mm -hmm. finds it, that's the, you know, yeah. and then really they work hard for it. Yeah. To bring them for them. And um, if you can <laughs> do that, I'm not playing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so we're asking our uh, parents as well, you can call in, share your ideas, and what do you think uh, are the problems? We're trying to, you know, bring out the solution as well after the break, and then we can talk about it. You, but make sure you call in and tell us what to do. Um, before we go to break, um, the assumption like all kids are lazy, they don't want to do anything, but that's mm. not the true, that's not the true uh, word of you know, no, for no. those kids. They are really talented kids around, you know, fantastic. Mm. You because you've been working with them. Mm. There are really plenty of them. Yeah. So how do we educate our parents or my age group? Mm. You know, my age group means, yeah, I'm quite old. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask you me don't look it, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> all the makeups. So um, <laughs> that's not the true picture we're seeing. Mm. You know, maybe we can see one or two th things. Uh, okay. So after the break, what we're going to do is we're going to come and bring some solutions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. give some tips to our young people, and they might, you know, definitely will learn something from it. Do you viewers? Shoma to buy bunera. Amra chuttu ekta breathe to jachi. Ab mool kosi apna the jato young buy ibong bunera sin bashate. Shoma ke niye ekto boshen. Ibong apna ra note korein. Amra pore bolbo the what are the solutions for unemployment and for the kids. So I uh, will see you after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs>